Welcome to AQMD On The Air. I'm your host, Lior Alpern. Our guest today is a successful businesswoman, a generous community volunteer, and an experienced leader. She is the president of Lutz & Company, which provides professional training and expertise to the e-reporting industry nationwide. She boasts of many honors and awards, among them the Iris Award as Citizen of the Year, the Chamber of Commerce Dick Lord Award as Business Person of the Year, Business Life's Women Business Leader of the Year, California State Senate Woman of the Year, and various accolades from local, state, and county associations. She is also a member of various regional governing groups, such as the San Gabriel Valley Council of Governments and chair of their Environmental and Energy Committee and Water Working Group, vice chair of the Los Angeles Regional Water Quality Control Board, member of the Los Angeles County Integrated Waste Management Task Force, and board member of the Los Angeles County Division of the California League of Cities. Volunteering with local organizations such as the Rotary Club, the Monrovia Day Association, and the Boys and Girls Club are among many ways that she gives back to her community. However, the first of her commitments is her leadership as mayor of the city of Monrovia. Mayor Mary Ann Lentz, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Could you start by giving our viewers an explanation of some of the environmental priorities for the city of Monrovia? Sure. In 2009, we adopted a program called um, Monrovia's Environmental Accords, and mm -hmm. we have 21 different things that we are doing to become more environmental. They range from water quality to waste management and air quality. They range um, to uh, transportation issues, all kinds of issues. I wouldn't say there's one or two that we specifically you know, focus on. We're, we're trying to work on all 21 on a regular basis. And here at AQMD, we're familiar with this program, and we awarded it with a Cleaner Award back in 2009. Yes. And uh, it was in the Model Community Achievement category. What are some of the objectives of the program, and specifically um, when it comes to air pollution, if you can give us some examples? Sure. One of the things that we have identified is um, keeping in mind with AB 32 and trying to reduce um, particulates <coughs> and, air and make our air quality better is that we needed to look at our fleets mm -hmm. and our city's fleets. And so we've adopted a program of uh, fleet replacement that we look for. Um, either hybrids, electronic, CNG. So we will first go to that kind of a uh, vehicle for our city. And that w that's the biggest thing that we've done. And then we're, we're doing um, you know, a whole study of where our air quality issues are in our city so we can address them. Now this plan also uh, involves uh, urban design and incorporating new urban designs into the city's plan. Mm -hmm. uh, could you give us a little more detail about that? A few years ago, we realized that one of the key elements to, to making a sustainable community is having denser communities mm -hmm. and denser buildings in certain areas of our city. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing we did is we identified where those are. Mm -hmm. And one of the key areas is in our Station Square project area, which is where the gold line will be coming through. Mm -hmm. And that will include um, high density housing, office, um, some light retail. So it'll be a true transit oriented development, which lends itself to better air quality because the key is to get people there who will use the light rail to go to and from work and having a lot of walking and bicycle paths and things like that. Well, you mentioned the uh, extension of the gold line and transportation mm -hmm. is a major theme uh, here at the AQMD and on the other on the air interviews that we do. Uh, you personally have been very involved in the effort to uh, go to Washington and to explain the, the need that we have here in the region for more transportation funds for projects like the Gold Line Extension. Could you describe a little bit about those efforts? It's difficult when you go to Washington, D.C., and if you're not talking to your own Congress member who mm -hmm. obviously knows what's going on, but we will be talking to Congress members who have never been to California, or if they have, they've been to a specific area and they don't really understand the, the nature of how California works. And one of the things that, we've, that we try to explain them is our ports and, and the things that happen in California really affect the entire nation. Mm -hmm. For example, our freeways are being just, you know, cluttered and they can and you can't move and we can't get the port the goods from the ports out to the rest of the nation if our freeways are stopped. Mm -hmm. If we're if we're so congested. So getting um, and putting money towards light rail 
towards other options for our residents to use to move around with mobility mm -hmm. helps the entire nation. So it's, it's about telling the story of how California and Los Angeles in, as a region works to affect the entire nation and, and we really focus on that when we go back east. And for you personally, I imagine uh, when you speak to members of Congress, you have been uh, widely recognized as having a, a keen business sense of recognizing where these environmental concerns also our business concerns. And um, could you explain to us the, the compromise, sort of the balance between those two and when you explain it to, say, our representatives in Washington and also here in regional efforts that you're involved in, uh, how exactly you explain those two and how they work together? It's more difficult when you're, when you're talking to other business leaders mm -hmm. as opposed to most legislators who really understand that you've got to find a balance. You, we, we need to have clean air, we need to have clean water, we need to be environmentally good stewards of our community and of our, of our world. However, we live in the real world. So there, the balance of, of taking the, the regulations that we have and making them doable for the business community is where we try to balance it. Um, sometimes it's just as easy as giving a, a permittee more time. Mm -hmm. It's just as easy as helping them be trained on, on what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And so through all, from Washington all the way down to the dry cleaner store in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. it's all that same kind of discussion and, um, and it, it really can make a difference. Could you describe for our viewers a bit about the city of Monrovia, its location relative to the region and the air quality issues that are unique and affecting your residents? Sure. Monrovia is located about 20 miles northeast of downtown Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. We're nestled in the San Gabriel foothills. Mm -hmm. So the air quality is, is really important to us because as from the ports and in Los Angeles, the air blows into our, our valley mm -hmm and the mountains make it sit. Mm -hmm. So many, many years ago, we were probably one of the most polluted valleys in Los Angeles County. Mm -hmm. Things are so much better now through everybody working together and knowledge of how to stop it. But that's what happens with us, even though we don't have the ports and we don't have you know big uh, semi trucks always running through our city, we get the air pollution from most of Los Angeles County into our region of the San Gabriel Valley and because mm -hmm. of the mountains the wind just takes it and it sits up, sits right over top of us. Given the air quality challenges of, of your city and certainly that the whole region is aware of that you've been involved with AQMD's efforts for quite a while, uh, could you describe to us a bit about the relationship that, that the city of Monrovia has working with AQMD especially when it comes to crafting and implementing new air quality uh, regulations? We enjoy a great relationship with AQMD and as an elected official I, I feel very close to the board members that are elected to represent us. Um, mm -hmm. Many of them I call friends as well as you know electeds or, or other board members. And our staff works very well with the AQMD and, and some of the staff that, has, that comes to our city to help work with some of the issues, they bring ideas that maybe we didn't think of. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, I find the AQMD staff is always open and willing to think out of the box with our staff and we mm -hmm. have a very think out of the box staff so it's, um, it's really a win-win situation. And your efforts with AQMD have recently included also now the local government small business advisory group mm -hmm. that you joined. Could you tell our viewers a bit about the importance of, of this entity and what your involvement will be with it when it comes to again AQMD's regulatory authority? Yes. This is a really important group, I feel, because um, this group gets notified and information given to them about things that AQMD is looking at, things that are important to uh, everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, electric cars. Mm -hmm. And how do we as uh, municipalities, as business owners, work with the AQMD and the car manufacturers to make sure that somebody can go and purchase an electric car, take it home and plug it in. Mm -hmm. Because there are certain steps that need to be done. Permits from the city and, and working with the electric company and AQMD and all of those things. And, and that's been probably one of the largest things lately that we've been talking about is how mm -hmm. that process moves. So what I find is great about this committee is they the presentations about the subjects and then everybody has a different point of view or a different opinion or a different 
thought process of how to move forward, and those kind of things are being taken back to the actual AQMD board. Before we close, as your position as a, a leading business figure and certainly as a mayor of uh, one of the cities here in the region, what messages would you have for both business leaders and other uh, representatives from our local cities as best practices, ways for them to work with the AQMD in partnership to help clean the air? That's a great question. Um, first of all, don't put your head in the sand. You, you need to engage. Um, I don't think there are many municipalities and cities and officials that are not engaging, but for those that aren't, that's the biggest. That's the biggest. Um, I, I think there's a real understanding that we're all working towards the same goal. Mm -hmm. And we just need to talk about it. And we need to find the solutions that work for everybody. And you, that only happens when you reach out and collaborate. And so just, that's my goal, just collaborate. Mayor Lutz, it's been a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you so much for joining us, for telling us a bit about Monrovia's environmental plans, your history of working with AQMD, and for your leadership, passion, and commitment to helping clean the air we breathe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. And that's our show. I'm Lior Alpern. Thank you for watching AQMD on the Air. Visit us at cleanairconnections.org to learn how you can help us clean the air that we breathe. Let's work together.